Mr. Dameron, do you think genetic engineering will permanently change our society, and in what ways? Um, yes, uh, genetically um, tweaked organisms of all kind are now across the planet from insects to foods and foodstuffs, and we have no idea what their consequences will be. Uh, if we only look at just things such as Jurassic Park, which is a ridiculous movie in and of itself, but the character of the mathematician says life will find a way, and life always does. Genetics is a really powerful tool and could be a great tool, but without the proper um, safeguards and without the proper research, then we risk introducing an element into the world that we have absolutely no control over. Um, I mean, on top of that, how else will it change the world? Once you start talking about genetics, you start talking about cloning. And cloning is the pinnacle of what human technology could someday do. I mean, imagine having a spare you walking around in case you lose an arm or an eye or need a kidney transplant. Mr. Dameron, what do you think the genetic consequences will be further down the, further down the line of the future? It will force humanity to start really asking and looking for answers to questions that we have not wanted to deal with as a, as a planet. Uh, everything from religion to the nature of mortality. Um, genetic engineering, things like, uh, again, like I mentioned a moment ago, things just like once we are able to genetically create a heart, per se, then the company that does that, of course, will be filthy, filthy rich. However, now that we can remove donor lists from the entire world, then who's to say who lives and who dies? If we can easily just manufacture a heart that, that your body will not reject because it is effectively your heart, then who gets to say who doesn't get that? Right now, we, again, we use these things like donor lists because there's a limited number, but once there's not, then who gets to say who lives and who dies? Who gets to say who survives cancer and who doesn't? And then again, when we get back to that, then once we start to release these things into the world, how do we know how they will or will not affect the world as a whole? Once we can make fake meat, then who's to say how that will affect the world? How will it affect us? Is Even though it is genetically identical to beef, does that really mean that it is absolutely completely identical to beef? And what will our digestive systems do? Will we begin creating whole new cancers? Genetics is a great tool. It's just a terribly scary one, too, without the proper safeguards and, and research. How do you think economic standing affect, will affect people's views on genetic engineering in the future? It already does. Monsanto is one of, in my personal opinion, one of the most evil corporations on the face of the planet because of genetic engineering. They can do amazing things and have genetically engineered crops that withstand tons of things, pesticides, droughts, all sorts of stuff, but it gives them a legal and financial foothold on everyone else around them. If pollen from a Monsanto crop drifts across the road and pollinates your crop, they have literally sued and have been allowed to sue time and time again and win in the courts of law and basically take away farms, which allows them more farming land, which allows them more money to genetically alter more crops and allows them then to continue this particular cycle. So in that regard alone, economics is, is genetics. Um, the examples I gave earlier about things like transplants and things, I mean, effectively, we're looking at genetics being a possibility to the road to live forever. If you can't die, then those people that are wealthy will want that all to themselves, and all they have to do is price it out of the realm of everyone else. But is that fair or just? Riding up with an entire realm or world of the rich having one more thing in which to have control over. And we could get into a whole other conversation, but control is power and power is economics, so. I know this is probably going to be the world first. Uh, so if it's uh, not safe or have any problem, it may rule the entire field and the people may lose trust in the new technology.
A Chinese researcher has claimed that he helped make the world's first genetically edited babies. This provocative claim is shaking up the science community and constitutes an untraditional approach to reproductive science. In cases where the potential risks are substantially higher than the benefits, which I think is the case here, that is not ethical. Many scientists think this procedure unsafe, and some have denounced it as human experimentation. I feel a strong responsibility uh, that it's not just to make it first, but also make it uh, as example how to perform studies, consider morality of society, and consider its uh, impact uh, to the public. Gene editing is a new technology that is just beginning to be used experimentally in adults to treat deadly diseases. However, this kind of gene editing is controversial because the DNA changes can pass to future generations and it risk harming other genes. We still have a lot of work to do to prove and establish that the procedure is actually safe. I would say that no babies should be born um, at this point in time following the use of this technology. It's simply too early, too premature. So I am here with Mrs. Miyashiro, the AP biology teacher at Rirecho High School, and I just have a few questions with her for genetic engineering. So Mrs. Miyashiro, what do you think genetic engineering will permanently change our society, and in what ways? So genetic engineering has already permanently changed our society, so genetic engineering is not a new technology. Genetic engineering goes all the way back to when we started to uh, domestically breed plants and animals. So everything you eat is sort of the result of genetic engineering, albeit primitive genetic engineering, where we basically just took plants and animals with traits that we liked and we bred them together and so on and so forth. That's how you end up with all of these great things. Having said that, Genetic engineering has changed a lot since then. It's changing at such a rapid pace. It's undoubtedly going to continue to change society as we know it. Uh, it's going to make for um, crops that are able to produce uh, vitamins and uh, proteins at, at you know rates that uh, most people don't have access to around the world right now. So I think plant genetic engineering actually may be one of the things that uh, solves a lot of the world's problems as we are outfishing our oceans. Uh, climate change is completely going to devastate uh, the crops that we currently have. Uh, maybe the only way out of this is through some sort of genetic engineering. All right. At the present level of advancement of biotechnology, what are the main techniques of genetic engineering? So that is kind of a trick question because genetic engineering is changing at such a rapid rate that I couldn't tell you today what tomorrow's main genetic engineering technology is going to be. Right now, the big one is called CRISPR. And CRISPR is one that literally we can take genes and we can edit them very much like you would edit a Word document. They can find a specific gene sequence delete that sequence out or they can splice another sequence into it and literally stick genes in uh, to organisms that didn't exist in those organisms before. So right now we have the technology to do line by line gene editing. The problem is we don't necessarily know what that will do to the organism. How does economic standing affect people's view on genetic engineering? Hmm. I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think that oftentimes people who are less educated deal with it as a black box, black magic kind of thing, um, and are very weary of genetic engineering. But I also find that very much like the anti-vaxxers, people who are highly educated oftentimes fall on the same side, and for reasons that I don't completely understand. Um, so I think that socioeconomic standing of individuals can affect uh, their outlooks. Now, how, how the socioeconomic effects would play out in individuals is an interesting thing to, to consider. Historically, a lot of biotechnology stuff was experimented on poorer people, the, the, the less advantageous people. 
were the ones where the experimentation phase was done, and then it was the richer people who were able to then benefit from that. I wouldn't be surprised if genetic engineering doesn't go down that road. So final question, will there be genetic consequences further down the line? Undoubtedly. Again, couldn't tell you what they're going to be, because right now we can genetically, so they, for example, there was a case in China where they did some genetic engineering on humans, which is verboten. You don't do that, okay, until all these safety precautions have been taken, okay? But they did this genetic engineering, supposedly CRISPR technique, on these uh, unborn kids to help prevent HIV infection, because their father had HIV, or has HIV. And um, it was met with um, just horror by the scientific community because no safeguards were put in place, no protocol was outlined. And that's really, really important when it comes to doing genetic engineering or any other kind of experimentation on human beings. Because sometimes if you're not careful, profit um, trumps ethics. And we have to really be aware of that.